On July 2, 2011, a 1,000-year flood event descended upon the city of Copenhagen, Denmark. The city was flooded with an incredible six inches of rain in less than three hours. The value of the damage to public and private property was reported to be over one billion U.S. dollars. To help cope with increasingly unpredictable weather patterns, the following year the city implemented the Copenhagen Climate Adaptation Plan. This represents an integrated regional effort to address and mitigate hazards associated with climate change and flood water. Several factors contribute to the region's volatile weather patterns. The city's location experiences a four-season weather year with a wide variance in temperature and precipitation depending on month and season. Climate change presents increasing unpredictability and instability in global weather patterns. The city's location in proximity to the Atlantic also makes it susceptible to relatively erratic and unstable weather patterns. The Copenhagen Climate Adaptation Plan states, the Danish Meteorological Institute predicts there will be a 25% to 55% more precipitation increase in the winter months in the year 2100. At the same time, the precipitation will be more intense. The intensity of the heavy downpours is expected to rise 20% to 50%. The changes are of great significance to how the rain will run off surfaces and for the load on sewer systems and watercourses. The Danish Meteorological Institute published alarming predictions for the region's weather patterns leading up to the year 2050. Predictions included that Denmark could undergo extreme increases in wind and precipitation events and severity. The country could face an increase of 6% more heavy precipitation events and seven more days per year in which precipitation exceeds 10 millimeters. The Climate Change Adaptation Plan and its subset, the Copenhagen Cloudburst Management Plan 2012, provide a model of proactive urban stormwater management practices. It entails mitigation actions on both public and private land. Effective stormwater mitigation depends on an integrated approach. This entails source control, on-site control, a slow transport system which slows down and reduces the water, and downstream control. The plan outlines a multi-pronged approach to present a variety of innovative stormwater flood mitigation practices. The plan recommends supplementing and expanding more green spaces around the city. This recommendation is intended to mitigate problems associated with urban stormwater management, as well as public health, aesthetic beauty, and to mitigate the urban heat island effect. The climate adaptation plan states, green continuous networks in the city can contribute to climate adaptation and the collection of stormwater. The plan recommends establishing green continuous networks and preserving and adding green infrastructure. The city has promoted its resilience through creation of a series of integrated greenways that run continuously through the city. The network will cover over 100 kilometers and consist of over 22 separate greenway routes when finished. The 2011 plan also recommends an expansion of the city's gray water sewerage system. The system is described as outdated and insufficient for current circumstances and future projections. The plan states, the pipes in many cases were built 150 years ago and are dimensioned on the basis of different criteria than apply today. This necessitates a major renovation of the system, including strengthening, replacing, and expanding capacity. The plan states that the volume of stormwater demand in the year 2100 could be 30% higher than present. Since 2011, the city has established 25 combined sewer overflows. The cost of investing in a comprehensive new sewer system was estimated at between 1.7 and 2.6 billion U.S. dollars. The city is now actively reinvesting in its stormwater mitigation infrastructure to direct stormwater to port and coastal areas or to innovative floodplain areas within the city, including parks, squares, and sports facilities. The plan recommends an innovative street network design which collects water and directs it to preferred areas. These preferred areas can take the form of an adjoining harbor, designated floodplain areas, underground tanks, or other areas of the gray water sewer system. These gullied streets supplement the city's other stormwater direction methods. Copenhagen continues to invest in an innovative public space system, which can double as stormwater retention reservoirs. This includes public squares, sports facilities, and a large park system. This includes the square known as Tazing Plads in the St. Kjelds neighborhood. A variety of urban flood techniques have been integrated into this public park. For example, the flower beds are designed to fill with water during heavy rains. The park also contains upside down umbrellas, which collect water. The landscaping of the park is designed to direct stormwater into several large underground storage tanks. The city has created over 30 such parks since 2011, which pull double duty as public spaces and stormwater retention areas. The Copenhagen Climate Adaptation Plan outlines a strategy for prioritizing risks which are more tolerable than others. The strategy outlines and organizes potential risks. 
the highest priority risks are those which have one, a high cost, and two, a very high probability of occurring. Potential risks are assigned acceptable levels. For example, the Copenhagen Climate Adaptation Plan sets an acceptable flood water level of approximately 10 centimeters on roadways. Copenhagen planners set mitigation goals with this 10 centimeter metric as a baseline for risk mitigation strategies. In the coming decades, global cities will increasingly work to mitigate stormwater flooding hazards. Copenhagen has provided a positive case study of proactive stormwater flooding mitigation measures. By utilizing the strategy of risk assessment, hazard prioritization, and a multi-pronged approach of stormwater mitigation, the Copenhagen Climate Adaptation Plan has provided a blueprint for the city to better prepare itself for future stormwater surges and urban flooding. This includes citywide investment and construction of green infrastructure, expansion of the gray water system, convex streets, and innovative public spaces which retain and slow stormwater. <laughs>